Okay, here's another cautionary tale uh, to show the claim is that the sum of two irrational numbers is irrational. You might want to pause and think about what you think about the validity of that claim. Um, and here's the purported proof. And this is, again, somebody who's rather confused about this idea of proof by contradiction and uh, the idea that maybe you can reach inside whatever you want and negate it creatively to prove what you want to do. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we can say, oh, okay, I don't like that irrational. That's too negative. I'm going to say let x and y be rational. Okay, so I've done some sort of negation. Really crucial, I didn't negate the conclusion. I negated um, the hypothesis. And actually, it's not even exactly the negation of the hypothesis. Because the, here the hypothesis would be that x and y are both irrational, if I want to make that kind of efficient, real numbers that are not rational. Um, and so I'm just kind of uh, very much fudging things here and just putting in negating certain things creatively and I'm trying to illustrate something that I feel like is a fairly common mistake. Okay, like x and y be rational, then the sum of those guys is rational. The sum of two rational numbers is certainly rational and if we want to prove that carefully, x can be expressed as a over b, y is c over d, and of course the rule is common denominators and that's certainly an integer over an integer. Okay. So, and then, hence, I'm going to put the question marks here, because this is where it just, just blows up to try to actually relate it what, to what this was supposedly claiming. Hence, I'm just going to say, okay, if, if this works for rational, I can just negate things creatively. I think that's the, perp the idea of proof by contradiction, which it's really, really, really not. Hence, if x and y were irrational, uh, pretty bad A and a bad L, then X plus Y would be irrational. That's just not, not going to fly. That's just no logical reason why you create, why you do that. So uh, this is a true fact. So again, it was a true it was a true proof of a different result, and then this trying to relate it back, kind of, sort of, in the spirit of proof by contradiction, is just bogus. Okay, you can't just reach in and creatively negate things and claim that you're proving something different. It's really very specific when you're doing proof by contradiction. You have to take look for if you to prove p implies q. You have to assume the negation of Q, and somehow, with other facts coming in, other creative proof strategies, you maybe yet another proof by contradiction inside, show that P must be violated. Okay, um, that's the only way to do it. Okay, so it's a true fact that the sum of rational numbers is rational, but this is not a proof that the sum of any two irrational numbers is irrational. Okay, so. Is it true? Well, good place to stop the video, but I will actually address it. Okay. Um, just take any, let x, so it's false. It's totally false. Okay. Let x be any, let's say, non zero. Now, remember, this was supposed to be an ear. Uh, universal statement, I could get away with one counterexample only, but it's more powerful to show a lot of counterexamples if there are a lot. Because you might just, if you just give one counterexample, then somebody can come back and say, oh, I just need to exclude that special case in my hypotheses. Um, but if x is any ir non-zero irrational, just let y equals minus x then x plus minus x is, of course, 0. That's this, and it's not hard to show that this is irrational. Let's assume that that's, we know that. The negative of irrational is irrational. Then they're going to sum to the rational number 0. OK. Um, many other kinds of counterexamples than that. There's, it's just really not something that's uh, 
that's it's not even close to true, really. Okay. So the point again is you can't just reach in and creatively negate things. That's not at all how it works. You have to really follow the strict rules.